Shit. Let's why it sucks to be a pirate by Salmonella Academy. I've been on a fucking big pirate kick lately. I already told you guys. And then after we watch the video, I'll get into the P.O. box, alright? Hey little Jimmy. Yeah, what's up? Do you like Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, it's alright. So do you think it'd be fun to be a pirate? Yeah. Well, guess what? You couldn't be more wrong. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I know. At some point, every kid has dreamed about being a swashbuckle and corn shuckle and wife cuckle and cocksuckle and pirate, but trust me when I say, it was really not all it's cracked up to be. First, we'll talk about the food. So The most insane part about Alison Brie is the fact that she is 38 years old. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I just, I have to put that out there. Like, 38 years old. I can't stop. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just like Googling Alison Brie on the side. Man. She's married to Dave Franco, yes. I, I'm literally Coomer locked on the other, on my, on my tertiary monitor. I'm watching Community. She was 30 playing a 20-year-old. Yeah, she fucking did great. Oh my god, dude. Okay, yeah, a man after my own heart, okay? Alison Brie, Alexandria Daddario, these are the same kinds of people. Like, this is the same kind of uh, appeal. Yes, 100%. But Alison Brie over uh, Daddario, in my opinion. So Let's one staple of the pirate diet was salted meat, usually wild oxen or pork. And I love jerky as much as the next guy, but this wasn't like a bag of Jack Links. In fact, it was probably closer in texture to your shoes than any meat you've ever eaten. In those it's not just brunette with blue eyes. There's another component that most people are unaware of. You couldn't just snap into a Slim Jim. That's a modern luxury that we take for granted. Back then, the slogan was gnaw on a Slim Jim for minutes on end, grinding it between your molars while the gallons of salt turn your mouth into a desert until the mangled hunk of flesh in your mouth is just soft enough to be shoved down your greasy fucking pirate throat without tearing a hole. Another essential food item was known as hardtack. This was essentially just flour and water baked into a cracker-like brick. Beyond the fact that it was totally flavorless, hardtack was also extremely dense, to the point where pirates would often oh my god shouts out to steve mre from our older uh from our older fucking uh older community memes hard tag boys steve mre is steve mre uh info 1989 is is fucking losing his shit he's just cooming at the thought of being able to eat a hard tag from like 1717 have to slam their fists down on it in order to break it into pieces small enough to fit in their mouth as long as it was kept dry hardtack almost never spoiled although it often became infested with weevils um excuse me protein sir, baby I'm a vegan so like can i have a new piece one without any of mother nature's beautiful creatures in it thanks it's protein wait a minute is this gluten free this better be hemp rope. Nah, but the weevils didn't make you sick or change the taste all that much, so, and this is true, the crew would just eat it in the dark, so that way they couldn't tell if they were eating a normal chunk or a weevily one. Then there's the crowding. So pirate ships typically packed in as many crew members as possible, because more pirates means more manpower when you go to board an enemy ship. Of course, the downside to that is that you're basically like a bunch of hairy, unwashed sardines. Let me illustrate what a typical night below deck was like. So you're sprawled out on the damp, musty wood floor. Everything's pitch black, you can't see a thing. The smell of the filth and the mold forces you to- This is what they took away from us, the feminist boys. We could have had this. You know what I'm saying? We could have had this, you know, just hanging out with the lads, all right? Hanging out with the lads on a fucking musty ship. You know, doing, doing gay shit. Whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. To only breathe through your mouth. Suddenly, your left hand feels wet. Probably just seawater leaking through the hull. You sniff your hand. Nope. No, that's piss. You feel something furry rub up against your elbow. It was either the body of a diseased rat or the beard of your diseased crewmate. Either way, that's probably where the piss came from. <coughs> Some guy's moaning loudly in the next room. Hopefully, he's just jerking off, because if he's dying, that's one more body to deal with in the morning. Rinse and repeat for eight hours, and then it's daytime. The poor diet and cramped conditions led to disease being a huge problem aboard pirate ships. The most well-known of these diseases is scurvy, where you don't get enough vitamin C. When scurvy first begins, you just 
just kind of feel tired all the time, no big deal. Then you get weird spots on your skin and your gums start bleeding. This progresses until all your teeth fall out and all of your body's mucous membranes start gushing blood and pus, causing you to die. So that's a lot of fun. There were tons of other diseases too, I won't go- Dude, like 90% of the diseases is- Oh, he's getting to it, Never mind. I was gonna say, it's all fucking dick related because they were just straight up Fucking one another and fucking prostitutes all around the fucking world, okay? Back and forth across continents, carrying fucking diseases that did not exist into different islands and then taking that and like bringing it to other fucking ports. Go through them all, but here's a few honorable mentions. Also, some people say that alcoholism is a disease. I might just be disturbed, but that's one sickness I could definitely get down with. If it is a disease, then yeah, just about every pirate had this one. If anything, though, I'd call that one of the few upsides of pirate life. Finally, there's the combat. So you've gone through all these disgusting, horrible living conditions, but at least you can enjoy the thrill of battle, right? Swinging from rope to rope, sword in your mouth, long, intense saber duels, that kind of thing. But that's typically not how it went down. For one thing, when pirates boarded a ship, nine times out of ten, they'd just surrender immediately. Because what are a bunch of well-groomed merchants going to do against a horde of disgusting barbarians? If the defending ship did decide to fight back, though, the resulting brawl wouldn't be anything like the movies. It'd be way worse, like immediate R rating. Because pirates rely a lot on brutality, both because they don't have much real training, and because it scares the shit out of people. If you were a deckhand on an invaded ship, and you were stupid enough to fight back, you wouldn't be dancing around doing flips and shit none of that. Instead, they'd probably shoot you in the stomach with a flintlock pistol, kick you to the ground, chop off your shoulder blade with a hand axe, gouge out your eyes with a marlin spike, wind your intestines around the prow, and then toss your twitching body overboard. And that's only a slight exaggeration. Honestly, if Jack Sparrow got attacked by actual- Wait. I thought like- I thought some of the main pirates though originally were not super fucking brutal. Like uh, the Bellamy. Black Sam Bellamy. Am I wrong about this? Isn't that... I guess he was... No, Charles Vane was very brutal, yes, but that's... Charles Vane was known for his brutality. Barbarians are pirates or pirates barbarians? You're right, because people surrendered immediately. If not, then murder happened. 20 minutes. What? Blackbeard was known for being intimidating, but in reality, he rarely killed anyone. Yes, except for the fact that uh, Blackbeard uh, betrayed me personally when I thought he was like a fucking based abolitionist. And then he literally sold his crewmates uh, to slavers when he wanted to cut a deal with the governor of uh, the then forming colony of North Carolina. Fucking bullshit, dude. Yeah, literally the worst motherfucking betrayal of all time straight up he's the son of a plantation owner okay is uh his second in command his quartermaster is a black caesar who is a freed slave literally starts off as an abolitionist and like routinely is hitting slave ships not just because they have the most wealth but also because uh he's, he's hitting slave ships exclusively to free uh african slaves those African slaves end up working for him. He, uh, like the the free, uh, the freed uh, uh, African slaves end up working for him as free men, for the most part. Then he fucking turns around and sells them. Really fucked up, dude. Really, really, really fucked up. It is a massive, massive anime betrayal. And then he got his head chopped off and fucking put on a, like, put on the fucking main uh, thing of a, uh, uh, of the ship. ...pirates, he wouldn't last a second. It's kind of like a used car salesman going to prison, like, I'll be fine. If anybody tries intimidating me, I can get out of it with my quick wit and charming personality. Boy, you look real pretty from behind. Oh, wow. I'm boned. So yeah, in short, if you're thinking about pulling a Captain Phillips anytime soon, I'd advise against it. That's all for today. Till next time, I'm- Okay, Blackbeard, rest in piss, son of a plantation-owning piece of shit. No, he, I thought he was based at first. I think the syphilis 
Honestly, it's a bit like I, I, I like to believe that the civil has rotted his brain and that's why he became the way.